In the news, Governor Ododo promises to reconstruct Ogori Magongo network roads in Kogi. Sangwolu approves last week of September for the annual celebration of Yoruba Week in Lagos. United States hopeful Hamas will accept Israel's new ceasefire offer. And in sports, Nigeria Football Federation appoints Fini Di George as new Super Eagles head coach. This is the MLC TV Global News, reaching you live from the city of Lokoja, the confluent state of Nigeria. I am Joshua Adinoy. Thanks for joining us. Kogi State Governor Ahmed Usman Ododo has pledged to construct road networks connecting communities in Ogorimagongu local government area of the state. Governor Ododo made the promise during the Owea or Sese Festival in Magongo. The governor who stated that assessment on the state of the roads in the area was ongoing also promised to renovate the general hospital in the area and replace the recently installed transformer. He described the Owea or Sese festival as a celebration of an ancient culture that has promoted unity, love and peace over the east, noting that the celebration of young girls transitioning into womanhood was an invaluable tradition that has endured for generations. The governor urged the young women and participants at the ceremony to use the opportunity to preserve the sanity and value of womanhood while aspiring to attain a brighter future. Governor Dodo enjoined the people to key into the renewed hope agenda of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu by embracing peace and reconciliation of all lingering conflicts between the people of Ogori and Magongo communities for more dividends of democracy. He called on traditional rulers, youth, women and stakeholders to close ranks and work together for a peaceful coexistence as a way of encouraging the government to concentrate more on the development of the state, adding that no meaningful development can take place in an atmosphere of rancor and acrimony. The Nigerian Veterinary Medical Association, NVMA, Kugi State Chapter has appealed to the state government for an improved remuneration and welfare packages for veterinary doctors in the state. The state chairman of the association, Dr. Tolu Omotuba, made the call during a road walk with different pet animals within Lokoja Metropolis as part of activities to mark the 2024 World Veterinary Day. The World Veterinary Day is celebrated 27th April every year with this year's team as veterinarians are essential health workers. Our reporter Sadiq Abiodun has the detail. When you hear that there is a drop in zoonotic conditions among the human population, it is an indication that the animal doctors are working. These are the words of Dr. Tolua Motuba, the chairman of Nigerian Veterinarian Medical Association, Kogi State Chapter, as a lead veterinarian on the work to celebrate World Veterinary Day 2024. Dr. Tolu emphasized on the theme of this year World Veterinary Day, describing that veterinarians are responsible for the health of animals as well as the public health. Our value addition in the society, just like today's theme, um, the veterinarians as essential health workers as essential health workers in the sense that we, we are responsible for the health of animals we are also responsible for public health so we are dealing with two health conditions the animals and the human beings we treat the animals when they are sick we go to the abattoir to prevent zoonotic disease conditions that are supposed to move from animals to human beings so today when you hear that there's um a drop in zoonotic conditions among the human population is an indication that the animal doctors are working. He also pleaded and drew the attention of the Kogi state governor, Usman Ododo, on the issues of non-implementation of the reverse comments in the state and vet doctor remuneration. Since we are, we are doing so much, you know, we've been saying this, I've met several state actors, I've met several stakeholders, and we've been saying it, and we'll keep saying it that the vet remuneration in Kogi State have not been properly attended to. You know, since 2021, there has been a revised commerce as a salary structure for doctors generally in the country. You know, several states have attended to this, but for Kogi State, it's yet to be attended to. You know, our members that are civil servants, 
they already received their salary yesterday. That means the governor is someone that has the interest of civil servants at heart and we recognize that and we really appreciate him for that. But again, we want to draw his attention to this particular issue of our revised comments that you should attend to it as a matter of urgency. You know, I was telling uh, the head of service the other day that vets across the 21 local governments, they wake up as early as 5 to 6 a.m., they go to the abattoir, they go to the slaughter slabs, and they close around 4 p.m. when other civil servants also close. From 5 6 a.m. to around 4 p.m., that's a long period, and they are overworking themselves. So we need to be adequately remunerated and compensated for this much effort that we are putting into the society. Secret to the animal ranching initiative of the federal government, Dr. Khalid Basiru, the Publication Relations Officer of NVMA, called for the full adoption of ranching due to its immense benefit to the society. One of the challenges we are facing in Nigeria today is the issue of farmer headers clashes, and that was what brought the issue of ranching to mitigate this um, conflict. So in, in, in an effort to support the issue of ranching, the federal government partners with the World Bank project called the Livestock Productivity and Resilience Support, of which Kogi State is one of the beneficiary states. So as we are speaking, currently the Livestock uh, Productivity and Resilience Support project, Alpres, is in Kogi State to help improve livestock activities, to help mitigate crisis and conflict between farmers and herders, and as well as to boost the economic uh, situation in the livestock um, subsector in Kogi State. Um, actually, the project is just starting up, and with the commitment of His Excellency Al Haji Usman Ododo, the, we have lands for ranching, and we also have lands for other activities that falls within the livestock value chain, not just ranching alone, including the animal health sector, the gender-based violence, the environmental uh, factors that um, affect livestock and productivity. Everything is being taken care of in this project, Livestock Productivity and Resilience Support Project. The veterinarians came out in their numbers to create awareness and show the importance of animal doctors as essential health workers and their worth in the society. I am Abiodun Sadiq, reporting for MLC TV. The Lagos State Government has written the State House of Assembly announcing its decision to set the last week of September every year for the celebration of the Yoruba culture in the state. The Speaker of Lagos State House of Assembly, Mudashiru Obasa, noted that the decision of the government followed a resolution passed by the Lagos Assembly at a sitting held on September 19th last year. The Speaker, in a statement by his Chief Press Secretary, Erumosele Ebomele, explained that the Yoruba Week celebration is expected to showcase various aspects of the Yoruba culture, including traditional attire, music, dance, cuisine, and other cultural expressions in a bid to promote and preserve the rich heritage of the Yoruba people while commending the state governor Sanwolu and his cabinet for the decision Obasa described it as a good development describing the Yoruba culture and heritage as important and stressed the need for its preservation the speaker also assured that the house was ready to support the executive to ensure the success of the planned Yoruba week in the state the joint admissions and matriculation board jump has released the result of the 2024 Unified Tertiary Matriculation Examination. The result showed that 1,402,490 candidates out of the 1,842,464 failed to score 200 out of 400 marks. The number of the candidates who failed to score half of the possible marks represents 78% of the candidates whose results were released by JAMB. Given a breakdown of the results of the 1,842,464 candidates released, the board's registrar, Professor Ishak Oloyede, noted that 8,401 candidates scored 300 and above, 77,070 scored 250 and above, 439,000 974 scored 200 and above, while 
490 scored below 200. Although they also noted that the results of 64,624 out of the 1,904,189 who sat for the examination were withheld by the board and would be subject to investigation. The United States government has restated its support for Nigeria to end terrorism and other threats to the country's security. The U.S. Deputy Secretary of State, Kurt Campbell, made the promise at the sixth session of the Nigeria-U.S. Binational Commission in Abuja, Nigeria. Campbell, who was represented by the Assistant Secretary for African Affairs, Molife, said security cooperation was at the core of the Nigeria-U.S. partnership, explaining that without security, prosperity will be far from the people and human rights will be threatened. The U.S. Secretary stressed that it was important for the two countries to work together to address the broad security challenges facing Nigeria, including terrorism, banditry, and piracy threatening its people. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Yusuf Tugar, in his remark, appealed to the U.S. to repatriate more illicit funds transferred from Nigeria officials through its banking system. Tugar, who was represented by the Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Adamu Lamua, emphasized the need for increased support from the U.S., citing $308 million as insufficient compared to Nigeria's losses from illegal funds transfers over the East. He reiterated the Nigerian government's commitment to utilizing the funds for the collective benefit of its citizens in line with the agreement with development partners. We go on a short break now. We'll be right back. Do you know women are adventurous, ambitious, captivating, confident, and dazzling? Do you know she's also dynamic, enigmatic, inspiring, and self-assured? Those are not all about who a woman is. She's also blessed with the wisdom to design her world. She is optimistic when she puts her mind to do anything, malleable and astute. And to crown it all, she is naive because of her total belief in anything she loves and same time noble with her character. These and many more about a woman are what we discuss in Analyze on Women's World, a program that celebrates women who have put all these attributes together to add value to their society. Be my guest together to tell your story yourself. I am a woman and I am proud to be. Join Faith Abdul Ghaffar only on MLC TV online by 6 p.m. every Sunday for all encompassing about who a woman is. For your contribution, comments, even to appear on the show, and for placement and sponsorship, please call any of the numbers displayed on the screen. Visit and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Molokai TV, and like our Facebook pages, MLC TV and MLC TV WW to watch our editions. Thank you. Welcome back. On the foreign scene, the United States Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, says he hopes Hamas will accept what he termed Israel's extraordinarily generous offer for a Gaza truce and hostage release deal. Blinken, while speaking as a Hamas delegation, discussed the new proposal with mediators from Egypt and Qatar. He said the proposal includes a 40-day truce in return for the release of hostages and the prospect of displaced families being allowed back to northern Gaza. It also involved new wording on restoring calm meant to satisfy Hamas' demand for a permanent ceasefire. Report added that the Hamas delegation has left Cairo and will return with a written response to the proposal. The Israeli government is coming under growing pressure from its global allies and the families of the hostages to agree to a deal. Mediators from Egypt, 
Qatar and the U.S. have been attempting for weeks to broker a new agreement that would secure another pause in the fighting and the release of the 133 hostages who Israel says are still being held, at least 30 of whom are presumed dead. Kenya's President William Ruto has called for a special cabinet meeting to discuss the ongoing flooding crisis in the country. Government spokesperson Isaac Muara said about 169 people have reportedly lost their lives so far in floods that has devastated parts of Kenya in the last month. President Ruto, while defending his government's flood response following criticism from country governments that it was slow, explained that additional measures on flood mitigation have been discussed with cabinet members, adding that the required resources will be provided to the affected areas. More than 130,000 people have been displaced by floods, with many people taking shelters in schools. In sports, The Nigerian Football Federation has announced the appointment of Fini Di George as new Super Eagles head coach. The former international beat Emmanuel Amonike to the job. George, who spent 20 months as an assistant to Jos Santos Pesero before the Portuguese voluntarily left the post following the accomplishment of Africa Cup of Nations runner-up position at Côte d'Ivoire in 2023, took charge of the squad in an interim capacity during two friendly matches in Morocco last month. Finidi's immediate task will be to guide the Super Eagles to victory in two 2026 FIFA World Cup qualifying matches against South Africa and Benin Republic in Uyo and Abidjan, respectively. The matches are must-win encounters with the Super Eagles lagging behind in third place in Group C of the African campaign behind Rwanda and South Africa. Jamivadi's double has helped Leicester City to clinch the championship title as the already promoted Foxes cruise to a crowning victory at Preston Northern End. The 37-year-old former England striker whose goals previously fired the Foxes to a Premier League title and FA Cup glory added to his reputation as a Leicester legend with a goal in each half to take his season tally to 20 in all competition. Kasim Maketa added a third with a close-range header for a completely dominant Leicester, who have become the fourth club after Burnley, Fulham and Norwich in as many years to make an immediate Premier League return as championship title winners following relegation. Next is entertainment news. The 12 year old daughter of Beyonce and Jay Z, Blue Ivy Carter, has joined the voice cast of the upcoming Lion King prequel, Mufasa the Lion King. Blue Ivy voices Kiara, the daughter of King Simba and Queen Nala, portrayed by her mother Beyoncé, who reprises her role from the 2019 photorealistic remake. Directed by Barry Jenkins, known for Moonlight, the prequel delves into Mufasa's origin story and his childhood alongside his brother, Scar. Jenkins praised Blue Ivy's professionalism. Noting that both she and Beyoncé approached their roles with dedication, highlighting their natural mother-daughter dynamic, stating that they didn't have to pretend much on set. Similar to the 2019 movie, it will blend live-action filmmaking techniques with photoreal computer-generated imagery.
And that is the size of our package for today. Do support us by subscribing to our YouTube channel, Malakite TV. Like and follow our Facebook page, MLC TV, MLC TV2, MLC TV Yoruba, and Debi Rababe MLC TV. Instagram, MLC TV2021, X handle Malakite TV, and TikTok, Malakite underscore TV. For your event coverage, appearance on any of our programs, contributions, comments, advert placement, or sponsorship, please call or send SMS to any of our numbers displayed on your screen. Join Malakite TV online on weekends to watch our various programs, Saturday 7 p.m. Political Arena, Sunday 6 p.m. Women's World, and Monday 9 a.m. The Opinion. It's Malakite TV, reaching everywhere, informing everyone. Please continue to be a brother's keeper to build a happier and better society together. I am Joshua Adinoy. Thanks for watching.